everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this memo holder. The idea for this one has actually come from this one that I have, um, but it's just a bit boring. So I thought I would do something and make it look much, much prettier. Also, I have used the Arteza scratch boards and on the website, when you go on, they sell them also in block form and they're three and a half inch by three and a half inch um, pages, you know, like this. And they're in a very similar box to this, so I thought, oh, I'm going to make one. So I have cut down the 24 sheets that they sent me. So I done a, it was a Christmas box that they sent me, and I was um, sharing it all, and this was in there. And um, I wanted a way that obviously I'm going to use them. And I come up with this, and I just think it's really good. So I'm going to put, some, I'm going to split them. I'm going to do half in the one I'm going to make, and that one's going to be for me. And this one I'm actually going to be giving to somebody else. So they've got the option to have the scratch pads, and you've got your scratch wooden stick there, or you can, you know, use your pen and have the normal pads. I just think it looks really nice. But the one I'm going to do today is going to match the lovely drawers that I made a few, uh, probably a week or so ago now. And um, anybody that's not seen these before, I remember these as children. It's basically like one big scratch card and you just scratch it away. And there's a, this one is multicolored underneath, rainbow pattern sh sheets. Um, and again, you've got two ends on the stick there. So you can do thick kind of lines and then you just get the kind of the, the top there that comes away. You can also make these. I have done something like that before. It was a class many, many years ago and you can make the kind of, you paint on this, um, you know, like um, a paint, and then when it dries, you can just scratch it off. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, they are fun. They're brilliant, you know, to do with children, and um, you get some great effects. And also what was in the this pack that they sent me, yeah, it was in this pack, they have, where is it, this here, and these are two postcards and one has silver underneath and one has gold. And those are the ones I'm going to keep and do some actual cards with them. But for all of these, I just thought it's not something I'm going to sit down and do this kind of thing with. But as a memo pad, definitely, because you can literally, it writes just like a pen. So, you know, to-do list, you can see there, I've just wrote that normally. And um, you can write quite quick with it. So just as you would with a pen you know, it's it's perfect. So I'm going to, that way they will get used. And also I can leave little notes and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's just fun. So yeah, that's what I've used there for that one. And then for today's one, I'm going to use these ones here. These were from WH Smith. I got them a while back, but I'm sure they're still in there. And any block ones, but you want something that is three and a half by three and a half, which is your size that they, they come. So this one is going to be, today's one's going to be a little bit smaller than this as well. because I've done it as four by four, but I think there's just a bit too much of a gap there. And because you have your kind of finger part there to take everything out, you don't need there to be the gaps on the side. So the next one, today's one's gonna to be a bit shorter. So let me show you. Also, there's the pens on the back there, really easy. And I've got my little metal corners on and it all looks very nice. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so for today's one, I'm using the Touch of Romance papers by the Paper Tree. This is the same one that I used to make, let me grab it, this beautiful piece here. So many of you are making this now. You are sharing it over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group and you're, yeah, you all seem to be really enjoying it. So what I also thought is that you could, if you wanted to, stick this onto, it will fit two of them side by side of these little memos that we're going to make. So when we get to that point, I'll show you how you could attach it to this if you wanted to. Also, if you have missed the tutorial for that one, if you just click up here, you'll be able to see it. So that's the papers I'm using. So I've already gone ahead and cut what I need. So for the base, I have cut this to, let me grab my other ruler actually. So this is a piece of four and a quarter squared for the base. For the paper to cover that, you want a piece of five and a quarter squared. So I've gone for the stripe. But if you're going to stick it onto your unit, if you've made that, then you won't need the base. All right. And then you want four pieces of four by 12. But you, well, we will, we'll trim one of them. Um, so, yeah, but that's the size you need. But what I want to try and do with this one, one of the papers is like this. So that's the top, this is the bottom, and then this was in between. So you can see there, there's my 12 by 12 piece of pattern paper. So I thought I'd use that to line the inside and then with these 
I'm gonna you, we, we're gonna actually stick two of them together because you need it's about 16 inches you need in length altogether and obviously we've only got 12 inches with our papers so by sticking them together then it will wrap all the way around and then I'm going to use this grey board. So the grey board I'm using is the 2mm and it's that one I've been getting from Amazon um, and it's, it's really nice so but you can also use the foam board if you've got it but well actually yeah you should be able to because the length that I give you in the paper you might just have to keep yours a bit longer and maybe not trim it because that's 5mm whereas this is 2mm so there will be a little bit extra. So you want three pieces that are two and a half by three and three quarters and that's going to be for the back and the sides and then for the front part and that's where we'll be able to kind of lift out the little post-its or the, the you know the memo bits then this is one and a quarter by two and a half okay so it's really easy and um, the metal corners I'm gonna to have to have a little route around for in a minute because I want silver ones for this one so I'm not going to put mine on top of that, but I do want everything to kind of match. I just think it'll look nice. So two pieces, make sure your pattern's facing down. The join is going to go on the back of that and then the pens are going to cover it. So don't worry too much, but you want to stick about an inch over the top of it. So grab my other one there. So you want to just add some glue so it covers one inch make sure I've got my pattern both the same way up. I'm using my grid here because these squares are one inch so I can just stick it like so. So just stick that down and then you want to grab your three larger pieces and you're going to stick these in the middle so you want to make sure you've got even overhang here and these two are going to go on the edge. Basically just going to be like we're making a mini album and this is our front cover so we do it just the same way. The gap you want to leave in between is about um, one eighth of an inch. That's where you want to kind of be. I always, when you fold up the side of the grey board, this is usually what you do, you fold that up so it's next to this piece and then you kind of keep it in place and let it kind of come down. Oh, it's moved a bit and that's, do it again, that's the gap you have. But I always then like to pull it out just a little bit more. And that way it just means that you definitely won't get any cracking with your paper. Because I am using a paper. This one here is 100, yeah, 160 GSM. So it's got more of a paper feel. But it's perfect for these kind of projects. Because it will, you know, it's just better to fold and stuff. You start to creep into 200 GSM and higher. You have a lot more bulk when you're kind of bending on corners and stuff like that. So I'm just going to, I'm using the cloud glue all the way through this. I've run out, otherwise I would use that. It's, I've turned it upside down, but there just wouldn't be enough for this project. I need to order some more. Otherwise I would have used the book binding, but I'm just gonna use my Kalau here. So I'm just gonna pop some blue glue on the back there and then just stick this down in the middle of this paper, like so. And then do the same with all of the pieces and just make sure you've got the same one eighth of an inch gap in between them all. Okay, so while that's kind of just drying, just bring up the sides. Um, like I said, if you are using the foam board, then I wouldn't trim this just yet because I would make sure you've got enough to wrap around. Or once you see where I trim it, then you, you can trim yours accordingly. But um, otherwise you should be able to use that foam board. Okay, so just folded those pieces up and then I just want to make sure I've got the same amount kind of overhanging there and there. So just do that with, like I said, with the foam board if that's what you're using. Keep these bits always handy, um, scraps. And then we just want to stick this over again like as if we were making a mini album. So first of all I'm just going to run the glue along the side of the grey board there because you do have, you know, that two mil so the paper will stick to the side and then we're going to bring in the sides of each corner so I'm just going to run some glue so it just kind of covers all of the corner so and then just bring the corner into that grey board like that so you want a nice square shape actually stuck onto the grey board. So again, come around to that one. And you want it to, you know, really wrap around the corners there. And then do the same. Like so. 
and then I like to use my bone folder but if you just kind of push it down into start down here actually just push it into the corners just to really just get everything stuck down and then just pop some glue on the top and just kind of bring up the side like so and then you can just fold that right over and then do the same on the other side Then again on the very ends here as well. Okay, and then you just want to very carefully, if you, I like to use my other bone folder, which I can't find, is just to kind of push in the paper just carefully on all of those kind of joins, and then it will all come around like this. You want nice right angles and you shouldn't have any cracking because you've given yourself plenty of room. But now, that's the back, but I've got nice little bits of the pattern coming up along the side there. It's just gonna match really well. The next we wanna decorate the insides, so that's when you need this piece. But what you wanna do is, we're gonna stick them both together again. So let's just do that a second. So flip them over again, stick one inch, just overlapping. And then we're going to stick this now on here, but we need to trim it down. So the 12 inches isn't long enough. So unless you just want to cut a little bit and join it that way, but I just want to keep that join again in the middle, just so that everything kind of looks neat. Let's just line that up a little bit better. So that's going to stick over like so, but you want this overhang here, okay? Because we're going to use that to stick it onto this piece. All right, so what you want to do here is just with a pencil. So I've got my join in the middle of the middle square there. I've come down a little bit because obviously you've got all of that coming over there anyway. Um, you'll probably have a contrasting colour, so you'll be able to see it a bit better, but I'm just going to do a little pencil mark there and there. Let's just trim this, then you'll see what I've done. Okay, so now I've got that piece and then it will stick in there like so. But you want it to overhang, all right? We want a nice overhang just so we've got plenty to be able to stick it down. So now I'm going to run, um, yeah, I'm going to put the glue onto here, but don't go right up. We well, can go down to the very bottom, but don't go right up to the very top because the paper won't go all the way up there. You should come down just a little bit. I'll come down about a quarter of an inch. One eighth of an inch, something like that. And then go right down to the bottom. This has become a real nice strong piece, um, you know, storage um, or stationary. So pop that one all down there. Let it kind of grab, but then we're going to start moulding it into the shape before it's completely set. So I'm just going to spread out some of that glue. Okay, so just start again with your bone folder, just kind of, you know, pushing it into that fold, just to help it, oh. Don't push it so hard that you crack it like that. You've got to be really careful. I didn't even really need to do that. It's all right, you're not going to see it. It's going to be completely hidden. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, so try not to push down too much, but you want to start getting it into that shape like that, and then you can cut up because you can see now the, the creases. You're going to cut up to the bottom of the board. And we're going to fold this all in and create a base, just so we've got something to stick it to. But now you'll be able to fold that all around. And if you get anything where it kind of lifts, just go in there and just stick that down. But you want to kind of keep it in that square shape, like so, all right? So just spend a minute making sure everything's dry and you're happy with how it looks. Okay, so that's all drying. What you want to do now is just take 
a little wedge off of each of the corners because we, we need to fold these into a nice square shape. So just a little bit. You just don't want it to kind of buckle at all. You want it to be nice and flat. Okay. What's going to happen next is you want to carefully, this is why you want to make sure it's all dry, but you're going to fold this back on itself so it lines up perfectly with the bottom there. All right, so just go along. Like so. Now we can stick these. It doesn't matter that they don't join, and you know, that's not what we're aiming for. We just want a nice surface for us to be able to stick everything. But if you imagine it's all going to be like that, you can stick the, those front pieces over the top. We're just going to add glue, and you want to keep it in that square shape. But that then means that we can just add glue to that once we've done this piece, stick it onto that, and then we're going to put a nice decorative piece of paper over the top of that, and it's all secure. So you'll need to do this piece if you just want to have it on that piece that I've showed you. I'll bring it over in a moment. But what we do first is we'll just stick this on. So you just want to add some glue to the top. And you're going to cover this in exactly the same way. So bring the corners in like we did. And then if you've got your metal corner protectors, we're going to put them on as well. Then again, I'm just going to add glue to just like the corners. And then lift them all up in exactly the same way, then glue the sides and fold them all in. So I'm going to do all that on high speed. Okay, so that's all covered and then I've also just covered it with a piece on the very back which is 4x4. Four four. Okay, so now we've got this ready and then I've got my corners here, I've got my trusty little hammer. I've had a few people ask me about this, this is from a very old Dovecraft tool, craft tool kit and inside, I wonder if I've still got the tin, bottom of my drawer and in here you've got a little craft mat You've got pliers, you've got a pokey tool, you've got big needles, you've got a different... Oh, that's for hammering. Yeah, that can do your eyelet sets. You've got different hole punches there if you want to obviously hammer them tweezers. Um, and it's, yeah, it's quite an old one. I've had it a long time. Um, I'm sure there was a date. 2007 Dovecraft, it says on there. So, um, but anyway, it's just really handy and yeah, I always use the hammer. So I've got some of these decorative corners here. My size is 15 mil by five, roughly around that. So you just pop them on there. I'm gonna turn it over. And then you just wanna just gently tap, or hammer actually, <laughs> each corner, like so. So I'm just gonna do that on the other three corners. Okay, so that's the base done. Obviously, if you're not doing the base, you don't need to worry about any of that. But this, you can now start to see what I'm talking about. So this is going to sit on here. It's going to sit actually just in all of those little metal corners. And then we're going to cover it with decorative paper on top. And that's it, it's done. So what you want to do first, we need to start squaring this off. So I'm going to just cover a corner of the back one. You'll end up putting glue on all of it in a minute, but just for the moment. And then just just focus on the back too. And you just want to maybe use your grid or something where you can make sure that you've got all your sides straight. And just stick that down for a minute. And I'm just going to flip it over again, keeping it nice and straight, just to make sure you have really got that glue stuck. Like so. So that's a perfect square now. And then you just want to do the same with these ones. So I'm just going to pop some glue on the backs of those. And again, get a real nice right angle and just bring that in. So it really doesn't matter what it looks like because you're going to be covering, well this is going to stick right to the base, but you're going to be covering it. I'm just going to turn it over because it's easier to keep it all lined up with my mat. Okay, so you'll now have something like that. Now if you would want to, oh it's gone off a little bit there, let's just trim, trim that off there. You don't want anything coming over, there we go. Um, now if you want to cut a piece for the bottom as well as the inside, you can. I mean I've got this piece here, so I might just, just for an extra reinforcement, 
let's cut this down to four by four and stick that underneath just because, oh no, it needs to be smaller than that, sorry. So that was four and three quarters. Four and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then I'm just going to add some glue just on all of this. That will just give you a bigger surface because there's not the gap there to then stick it onto either that or the unit if you've made that and you want to kind of it you know extend it and add more to it just turn that over okay so now if i grab my unit you could sit this on the top and if i pop it on its side you see how that's going to look and you could sit two side by side you could extend it you could have bigger you know um, papers in there you can do all sorts you could put your pens on the side uh, you know there's loads and loads of options but I just thought I would share that in case that is something you want to do but now we're going to stick this one onto here so it's all nice and square so all I need to do now is just add glue on top of this if you want you can use hot glue but I'm going to stick with my Kalau and I'll just put something weighty on there just to keep it all down. I'm going right up to the very edge of this time because obviously it will stick to all of that. Just want to make sure you've got a nice even little overhang there. You might decide you want a bigger base, you know, you can, you could do a larger one and have a pen pot on the side or something. There's, there's lots and lots of, you know, ways to make this, you know, into something more but I'm just going to hold that there I'm going to pop that on there and just hold the sides with my fingers for a minute okay so I've just cut this piece to go inside but I'm thinking I'm probably just going to stick with the white actually I should have just it was a piece of scrap this is three and three quarters yeah three and three quarters squared so um, I'll add it onto this actually and it just covers up all of that inside then and just again add some more strength to your little holder. Okay so that's finished now we need to do the pen bit but I'll just show you how this will look so let's just pop some of these in there. I tried to look for white ones but um, I couldn't so I'm just using these ones that I've got and it will hold a lot in there. This is, like I said, really handy. You know, it's great for the kitchen as well, so you can do it in the colours of your kitchen. But it will fit three of them in there perfectly. So the pen bit, is, again, it's completely optional, but I'm tempted to use... Mind you, that's not... Oh, let's use this piece here. I've got this piece of scrap. So the width that I've done, I doubled this up, so this is reinforced. So what we got, one and a half. So three. should be able to use this bit, actually. Um... There we go, so three, and you want to fold this in half. I'm just folding it because it's paper. If you'd rather score, then obviously do so. Like so. And then you're going to glue that together. I'll put my glue. So this is by, sorry I didn't give the measurement. It will be in my blog as normal. This is three by eight and a quarter. It's just scrap. You will trim this. Um, so just stick, fold it over and just stick it together. So you're just reinforcing that, just making it a bit stronger. Okay, and then on the back, I'm just going to take all that back out again. Okay, so what's going to happen is, is it's going to wrap around. So on here, I've put some hot glue and then wrapped it around the pen, hot glue, and then wrapped it around this wooden piece. But what I actually did is I wrapped it around a pencil because I figured that I'm not always going to have this in there. Once this is gone, then I won't be using that. So a pencil is obviously, you know, that's a standard size, you know, that's in every household that will fit in there nicely. So a pencil and a pen is quite nice. If you're going to use a pen, I would say if you're giving it, maybe you're selling these at craft fairs, then go for something that's a bit more, you know, of a standard size. Um, you might put some pens in them to sell with it. I always think that's nice as well. So, you know, play around, see what works for you. But I've got my hot glue on, just need to wait for it to warm up a little bit more. Um, and you could also have three in there. I mean, it would easily fit more. You can see mine's gone slightly off to the left there. I want to try and get this more in the middle this time. But I'm going to, let's have a little look. I've got a nice pen in here that will go, I think, a bit better. It's this lovely Kath Kitson one, which I love. 
it's got little dogs on it so I think yeah that'll look quite nice so I'm going to have that one there and then I'm just going to use a pencil again just to give me an idea but I want it to be like so okay so you want to decide if that's going to be there and there because you want there to be a gap big enough for it to stick to the thing so I'm going to start this one about there so you just want to kind of twist it out that way a bit I'm going to run some hot glue, make sure I'm in shot. Sometimes I lean too far back on my chair, but I'm just going to run a little bead of glue there. And then that one I'm going to pop just about there. So it's like halfway up. And if any glue oozes out, you can peel it away before it really sets. Now that one will go like so. You want to really push it up as close as possible. And then kind of just kind of mark with your finger where it's going to kind of be, like so. And then I can just lift that up and I can see where I need to put that glue. And again, I'm going to pop the pen in there just so I get the right angle and then bring that down, like so. Yeah, that's going to hold in there perfectly. If you want to come higher up, I did go a little bit higher up on that one, but that's still okay. I'm not too worried. I'm going to take that away, and now you've got a little area for, you know, your pen. So then I'm going to grab the pencil, and that one's going to be there. Again, I've gone a bit off to the left, so <laughs> you can play around a bit more. I seem to just do that. I guess I could fit three in quite well, so maybe I will. And then again, just mark that one a little bit. And I've just thought that's actually the one that we want to cut. So I'm just going to, before that glue dries, just snip it like so. Pop the pencil in and then just let that grab. And once it's at the back, it looks really good. That's how it looks. You know, you just don't see any of that. Now I'm going to, actually I'm going to put the pink the yellow and the green because the green I think goes quite nice with this paper so I'm going to have the green on top pink on the bottom it's much better that size you just you have a little bit of shake but not that big gap that that one's got although that still looks nice but now just let them all kind of level off I think the colors go quite well with this actually and there you have it. It's really, really pretty. I love these papers. It just, yeah, they're just gorgeous. And um, there's some more extra there. So I actually ended up using, because I said eight, well, it was eight, and that's five and a half. So it was only, what, one, two, about three inches that you, you needed to create that. But you could certainly get an extra one in there. So have a play around. I mean, these are just for me. That one's being given to a friend who I know is going to like it as it is anyway. But no, I'm really pleased with how that's come together. So there you have it, my two little memo pad holders. I'm super pleased with them. I think they look very pretty. This one matches my other storage now very nicely. And again, if some of you do stick it to the drawer storage that I shared earlier, I'd love to see you know what it looks like and what you've done to kind of adapt it. And um, yeah, if you do want to go for something more, you know, um, patterned and darker because this was obviously using those black ones there what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep I'm going to half them so I'm going to have some of these in here and then you know some of the papers I'll jumble it all up but um, like I said see if you can find any white blocks I couldn't find any because um, I wanted them for this tutorial but because I've got the coloured ones I thought actually they don't look too bad in that one at all so yeah I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you like it please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and consider subscribing so you get to see more see you soon bye